Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another reading vlog. I'm going to try and make this one a little bit shorter because the last one that I made was 45 minutes long and I do not know who wants to watch me waffle on for 45 minutes. Quite a few of you did, so thank you. I appreciate that. But it was, it was long. It was very long. So anyway, this is another reading vlog. I was going to do this a different way. I was going to film an intro after I'd read all of the books that I wanted to put in this reading vlog. And then I decided against it, which means that I've already finished my first book. So I am reading on my Kindle. I read on my Kindle most of the time. And I feel like maybe I should put an explanation as to why I read on my Kindle a lot. And I don't have physical copies anymore. I might explain that in a different video. So the first book that I read was One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. This is a young adult mystery thriller novel. It follows five teenagers as they are put into detention. However, only four walk out alive. One of them is murdered and essentially the whole book is surrounded by this mystery of who killed this guy. Now, the plot thickens because the guy that is killed, and this isn't a spoiler because this happens really early on, his name is Simon and he runs a very Gossip Girl-esque Tumblr blog where he basically reveals the secrets of all of the pupils within the school and these secrets are very personal they can be very damning and he doesn't have a lot of friends he has like one friend and a lot of enemies so essentially anyone could have killed this guy i ended up rating this a solid three stars i know a lot of people really love this book and i know book talk has gone mad for it and i know the goodreads ratings are pretty good as well i thought it was just okay i'm not gonna lie i kind of found that the characters were very cliche and I didn't really feel much for them and I couldn't really sympathize for their situation because there wasn't really a lot going for them. Essentially you have the stereotypical thing of you have the jock, you have the popular girl, you have the nerdy one, uh, you have the quiet recluse who's a bit of a bad boy. So they're all very generic and I just didn't really connect with any of them at all and if I'm honest as well I didn't really care for Simon either and I don't really feel like he was made to be a likeable character anyway. I feel like the only character that I did have a slight interest in was Nate because Nate was I feel like interesting because of the way that he'd grown up and his background he was very different from the others because he didn't come from the good part of town and he had an alcoholic father and a drug abuser mum so I really liked him. I, I liked his story and I also felt really bad for Cooper as well. I quite liked Cooper. There's also a little bit of a romance in this book that goes on between Nate and I cannot remember what her name is, Bronwyn. Anyway, there's a bit of a romance between the two of them and I did not care for it at all. I felt like it felt so out of place in the book and honestly, I just wasn't interested. I didn't connect with it. I didn't care for it. I just felt like it didn't really belong and I honestly felt like the only reason reason it was there was to kind of push the plot along towards the end of the book and that was it and in the end it ended up being pointless anyway I just I didn't get it I don't know maybe it's because I'm the wrong demographic and this is a young adult and I'm now an adult and I don't really connect to that stuff but I mean I've read young adult before like I read young adult last year with Rome I mean uh, last year no probably the year before Anyway, the point is I've read Young Adult with Romance and I've liked it, but this, I just, it just felt out of place and I felt like it was very unnecessary. Which brings me on to my next point because I felt as if there just wasn't a lot of plot here at all. <laughs> I really felt like the characters would come to the conclusion that they should all like buck their heads together and figure out which one of them did this whole crime at the beginning, but it took the whole damn book. Towards the end it was like, hey, we're gonna get together and actually figure this out for once. And I'm like, it took you, it took you so long to do this and to think, oh, this is a good idea. I just, it was too long for me. I, I felt like th there were too many pages for nothing. <laughs> Which brings me on to my last point, which is, did I guess who the killer was? I did not. I mean, I had an inkling about one student, which actually turned out to be right. Like, they did have an involvement. Um, but there is another twist. And although I didn't really necessarily guess it, I didn't find it all that surprising either. I just wasn't really that shocked by it. I think mainly because... I just, I, I don't want to spoil it. I'm just going to say that I just didn't like the characters enough to actually feel shocked. <laughs> because in all honesty, I, 
I just didn't care for Simon. I didn't care for any of them. And you could have given me the most shocking plot twist in the world and I still wouldn't have cared. I rated this a solid three stars. It was okay, but I don't think it was anything to rave home about. Would I read another Karen McManus book again? Maybe. I mean, there's a couple of other books in this kind of, I'd say, series. They're not connected. I feel like they just take place in the same setting, uh, which is Bayview School. Uh, I feel like maybe if I was in a rut and I was like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll read something random, maybe I'd read it. Like, it, I haven't written her off completely, but I wouldn't gravitate towards her book straight away. So it is later on in the day now. In fact, it is the evening. It is 5.33. And I've done a little bit of reading today. I was gonna tell you earlier what my book was about, but then I got interrupted. So I just gave up and I am gonna tell you what my next read is. I'm so sorry if you can hear noise. That is my dog. He always chooses the worst times to be a knobhead and he's just chosen now when I turn the camera on like usual. <laughs> can anyone else with a dog relate? Because I swear to God. <laughs> so my current read is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I'm not sure if this is classed as a young adult or I feel like it might be classed as a new adult. Here is the person who always interrupts. Say hello. He looks everywhere but look, what's that? <laughs> so yeah, my current read is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I'm not sure if this is classed as a young adult or a new adult but I'm pretty sure not only from the way that it's reading but also because of the age of the main character because she is basically coming up to her 20th birthday. I'm gonna say it's more new adult. So from what I've gathered so far, this follows a young woman called Signa and essentially she has been, so from what I've gathered so far, this follows a 19 year old young woman named Signa and she has been looked after by members of her family because her mum died when she was younger and in the prologue of the book you actually see what ensues and from that point on you can kind of see that Signa has this weird ability to see death so she can see ghosts and she can also see death itself and she quite often sees death arrive and then take whoever he's gonna take however the twist is, is that when Death tried to take Signa, he couldn't take her and he basically said, you know, I will be back for you one day. And I'm on chapter two right now. And from what I've read so far, it seems like Signa keeps trying to get Death back and he's just spoken to her for the first time ever. I don't know if there's going to be a romance here. Like, is this a romance between her and and Death? I, mm. <laughs> now, obviously I haven't made it that far in yet, but from what it seems, I think that everyone who has taken care of her in the past has met an untimely end. As far as I can tell, like they all seem to have died under either mysterious circumstances or they've died of natural causes. But either way, it seems like she kind of has a bad omen following her around. I really like how this is reading so far. I really am enjoying the descriptive writing. I just... I, you know when you just read something and you can picture everything straight away and you're like wow this is probably gonna be a good book for me i don't know i feel like after the last book that i read i'm just really hoping that this is gonna be a good one obviously not far into it yet but we'll see how it goes and i'll update you guys soon okay firstly disclaimer if you hear any snoring it's a common occurrence on my channel now that we know my dog snores all the time in my videos it's literally the only time he ever settles down is when he's on a blanket or whatever so i just shove him on a blanket and then all you can hear is snoring so we're just gonna have to deal with that <laughs> so update it's a couple of days later i haven't really updated because i didn't see the point because i wasn't really that far into the book but i am now officially 48 percent in i am literally on the precipice of being 50 percent into the book and i really don't think i'm that far from being halfway so i felt like now was a good time to update and i'm really hoping to make some progress today i'm obviously getting ready to film a video i've already uploaded my one for today it's gonna be like a reading vlog that i have just had sitting there that i haven't edited also let me just say if you're seeing this this could be my last update ever i might be dead by the time you see this so i woke up on wednesday with my finger like some random pain in my finger and also it's so swollen and I don't think you'll be able to tell like this is the one that's swollen 
it's it's insane and I don't know what to do about it and I'm just like hmm is this concerning yes will I do anything about it no <laughs> anyway on to my thoughts on Belladonna so far I'm really enjoying this book I love it I'm just so immersed in it I love the paranormal elements and I also want to say there are almost like some horror-esque elements in here because obviously she can see all these ghosts but also she can see these weird things that happen that no one else can see so there's one point where she's sitting at this piano and all of a sudden like weeds and like soil are growing through the keys and like soil is growing on the ground and no one else can see this but her and she's like sitting there like panicking and her mistress or whatever she is her governess is behind her and she's like you know play play the piano and she's like shit so i'm really enjoying those two parts about the book I'm just so immersed in this story and I'm so excited to see where it goes. I'm really enjoying the mystery element as well because obviously I've gotten to the part where um, Sinia has realised that Lillian, which is the wife of the current household, now she died and Sinia has just, you know, found out through her ghost that she didn't just die of natural causes, she was actually murdered. Which brings me on to my next point, which is Lillian's daughter, who's called Blythe, she is also ill with the same thing that Lillian had and so this whole book is like Sinia trying to figure out who is you know behind all of this because obviously there's a murderer around. The one thing that I don't like so far is that there was a scene where Sinia is talking to Blythe and also her brother, uh, not Sinia's brother but Blythe's brother and they're talking and you know, Sinya all of a sudden drinks this tea and she's like, oh my god, someone's poisoning you. Which isn't the issue here. The issue is that they just believe her straight away. And I'm like, you've known her for five minutes. And you're just like, yes, yes, I'm being poisoned. <laughs> Which I'm a bit like, mm, I wish that that had gone another way. If someone came into my life and then turned around and said someone's poisoning you, I'd have been like, mate, you've been here five minutes. Obviously, I don't believe you. So I'm not sure how I felt about that, but regardless, I'm enjoying the mystery element to this book as well. I just feel like this book is slightly creepy, it's really moody, and I'm just loving it. So anyway, that's my update. I'll update you guys when I've either finished or once I've got further in. Hopefully I'm going to make some progress today. Obviously I'm going to get ready to film later. But yes, that is my update. Okay, little quick update. I've literally just been filming. So I am 55% of the way in. I'm on page 184. And I'm really hoping to stay up as late as I can tonight so that I can get this not finished, but at least close to finished so that tomorrow morning I can finish it. And oh, I really want to say that maybe I could finish it tonight, but I'm not sure. And I don't want to say that because it's always famous last words and I never manage it, but... We can hope. <laughs> I really don't know who the murderer is so far. I, for some reason, I don't trust the governess, is all I'm gonna say. I don't trust Marjorie. She seems nice, but like a little part of me just doesn't trust her. I also don't trust Elijah's brother. He keeps going on about like the business and signing over to him. And if he doesn't sign it over to him, to sign it over to Elijah's son, Percy. And he's just on about it all the time. And I'm like, mm, I don't trust you. I, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the killer is. Could it be Elijah himself? Could he have killed his wife and now want to kill his daughter? I don't know, stranger things have happened. I just don't know where I stand. And also the stable boy, whose name I cannot for the life of me remember, but he is sort of a love interest. He did say, don't trust anyone. So I'm like, you're a little bit suspicious, sir. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know, but it's keeping me on my toes. I haven't guessed so far. I also love the fact that Sinya, when she talks to Death, he always calls her a little bird, and it's giving me feelings, and I love it. <laughs> I love it when love interests come up with little pet names. It just makes me feel things, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's my little update. Hopefully, the next time I see you, I might have finished it, but who knows? <laughs> okay, little mini update. I've had to close the curtain because the sun is so bright today. I didn't know that the sun still existed because it's been overcast and raining for what feels like weeks now in the UK. If you're thinking of moving here, why? <laughs> it's so depressing. Anyway, 
mini update because I have a little over 100 pages left of this book. Oh my god, it's my new obsession. I love this book. I've just also realised, and this is the reason I'm doing this little mini update because I feel like such a dickhead, but I've just gone on TikTok and I found the sound that made me interested enough to read Belladonna, and in fact, Signa is called Signa. That's how you pronounce it. So I was all like, oh no, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'll go on Google. And in fact, it is an Italian name and it is pronounced Signa, but her name in the book is Signa. So I was right the first time. I wasn't wrong. But you know, now I've been pronouncing it Signa and I look like a fucking idiot two times over. So I just feel like I need to, you know, rectify myself yet again. <laughs> but this book is my new obsession and my dog is really clingy today. <laughs> but anyway, that's my little mini update. I'm really hoping that I can finish this today. I'm obsessed. I possibly am going to be adding Foxglove to my holiday reading list because I really like this book. But anyway, I'll update you once I'm finished. Okay, so this is my last official update for this reading vlog, so hopefully you'll be seeing it at some point. But I finished Belladonna, I think maybe like two days ago now. And let me tell you, it's been a really long time since I've read a newly released book because this is still fairly new. I think this one released last August, I think. I'm not sure. It released sometime late in the year. And it's been a really long time since I've read a new release and really, really loved it to the point where I am super excited for the next one to be released. And I think the next one comes out this August. So I have a little while to wait. And let me tell you, the struggle is real. <laughs> I just thoroughly enjoyed this whole experience. The whole book was a vibe. It felt very reminiscent of the Infernal Devices in the sense that it takes place in that very Victorian era where women are kind of having to act and behave in a certain way so that they can court men and hopefully marry a rich husband. It's that kind of vibe. It has almost like a Bridgerton vibe because there are balls where, you know, women have to write on their cards who they've danced with. Like it has that vibe and I loved it. I also haven't had this in a long time because it's one of those books where as soon as you've read the last page, you're just still thinking about those characters and still really fully immersed in that world and you just can't stop thinking about it no matter how hard you try and read your new book and I really enjoyed that feeling because that's when I know I've really loved a book and genuinely been extremely obsessed with it. So the writing itself was really beautifully done. It was descriptive but it wasn't too descriptive. It was just really beautifully written and if I was into audiobooks I would have loved to have listened to the audiobook of this because the sound clip that I've seen on BookTok just sounds really amazing and I feel like the audiobook would be really nice to listen to. I as well really enjoyed the mystery aspect to this book because obviously this does centre around a couple of murders and I really found myself trying to guess who the murderer was the whole way through and honestly I didn't really guess where it was going until like right at the end of the book when things were pretty much going to be revealed to you anyway. And I definitely didn't see the twist at the end coming. I would say that some people might find the romance a little bit weird. I personally was fine with it and I liked the romance. But the reason why people would think it was weird is because at the beginning of the book, obviously Signa can see death. Death is a physical, not human, but like he's you know, a person. And she can obviously see him and he sees her when she is a baby. And this isn't a spoiler because this is literally in the first chapter. And he sees her and he's like, you know, I'm going to come back for you or whatever because I think the way that he says it, it's almost like he's going to claim her once she dies and he's able to take her because at that point he can't. And obviously there is a romance that sparks between them. And I've seen a couple of the reviews on Goodreads and a lot of people are like, oh my god, he groomed her. Now, if this was the real world or it was a book that didn't have any paranormal or kind of crazy elements to it, maybe I would be questioning that. However, this is a work of fiction, okay? This woman can see ghosts, okay? She can literally see death himself. And I'm not going to worry too much about it. Like, I'm really not that bothered. Like, <laughs> I, I know that sounds bad, but I feel like there are worse books out there. Like, there are literally books about people getting kidnapped and tortured and falling in love with their capturer. So I'm not really that weirded out by this romance. I mean, I get that it's weird and it definitely gave me a weird vibe, but I'm not 
put off by it. Like if it was the real world, again, I definitely groomed. <laughs> But I really am not that bothered. It's a work of fiction. The girl can see fucking ghosts. Like, it's not that deep. <laughs> the one thing that I would say is that I kind of wish that we could have seen her learn more about her powers before she actually went to use them because I feel like that wasn't developed enough. I feel like there was one scene where when she went to finally use her powers, it was almost as if she just used them and she was able to do that. But there wasn't really any build up to that point so it kind of just felt like oh she's just used them even though she didn't know how to use them in the first place so i kind of wish there were maybe a couple more lessons with death and that was developed upon more because it kind of just felt a little bit too convenient overall the book was just really atmospheric i love the atmosphere i love the characters i love the storyline i could definitely see people not enjoying this book but i thoroughly loved it i ended up rating it five stars and i was extremely surprised by this book i went in not really expecting a lot it's not that i went in you know thinking that i might hate it because i hadn't really heard anything about this book but i went in with just kind of a blank mind i didn't know whether i was gonna love it or hate it and i absolutely ended up loving it and if i'm being honest right now i feel like this is a good contender to be in my top books of 2023 already i loved it and i seriously cannot wait for the next book to release so that was my reading vlog i hope you guys enjoyed if you've read any of the books that i read in this vlog please let me know in the comments what you thought of them or let me know if you're going to pick them up i really hope i'm getting better at these reading vlogs and i hope that they are entertaining in some way because i really struggle to know how to put them together and to make them entertaining enough that people want to watch them so if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a like and also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content from me and until the next video i will see you then so bye guys <laughs>